it going folks? Dave again here at Snake River Fly. Middle of winter thinking about some uh, summertime opportunities and, and uh, just wanted to tie something a little bit different. Today we're going to do a, a version of the Crinkles on Clouser. Got one in the vise here. Really good fly for uh, your bass species, your larger trout, and then a good bug to take saltwater fishing. Um, I've used it to catch stripers, wipers, and other species of saltwater stuff. Uh, real quick rundown of the materials we're going to use. We are going to use O'Shaughnessy style saltwater hooks, pretty pretty heavy duty hook. Uh, you can use a size 4, size 2, one knot works pretty good. We're going to use some lead eyes that, have, that are chartreuse with a white and black um, eyeball in them. The thread I'm actually going to use is Danville's monofilament. They make it in pretty much one size and it's about one pound test so it, it works out pretty good. We're going to use some crinkles on fiber, fiber available at Snake River Fly in pearl and the UV silver. And then I'm going to use some hair fibers in chartreuse to add a little that that color that you're seeing in the bug. A little bit of an acrylic paint to create some gill plates underneath. And then I, I like to use the five minute Z epoxy uh, available at most fly shops. It, I prefer it over UV cure because it dries clear and it's really not tacky at all. It stays clear for a long time and it's just no tack to it. it creates a great, great bomb proof head on there. So let's go ahead and throw a hook in and get going. Okay, we've got our O'Shaughnessy. I think this is a size two. And once again, we're going to use monofilament thread on this. It has a couple good properties. Um, it doesn't compress, it doesn't flatten out, it's pretty durable. Uh, but it, it provides a really neat effect when we're epoxying over it. We'll be able to see the colors of our fibers underneath it. I'm just going to start that on the hook shank there. But once you put it on a hook and kind of feel it, you really will feel a grippy texture to it that other fibers can adhere to very well. We'll start with our dumbbell and I'm going to put this on the top side of the hook so that when this bug is going through the water it rides with the hook side up. Put down a decent monofilament base so it has something to lock into and you want to position that dumbbell a little over a quarter of an inch back off of the eye so you're not crowding the eye. I put it in at a slight angle, do some wraps and then I'll start wrapping the other direction and straighten that out. It'll tighten up those original wraps. And then we'll do some figure eights on here to secure that. And then I'll do kind of an over under here to fill in that gap underneath the dumbbells. A few more figure eights. And we are going to epoxy over this. That'll be the final step to uh, secure these dumbbells and the materials to the hook. So, all right. Okay, this side, the upper side of the hook here is actually going to be the belly of the fly as it's swimming through the water. And we are going to use pearl crinkles on. Um, it's a loose fiber. So I'll select a clump of those. They're all pretty similar in length. To create our minnow belly. And I'll have my thread in front of the dumbbells to secure it. First, try to just keep those fibers on the one side and then I'll drop that thread underneath, come up around the back side of that dumbbell and secure it back here as well. And then I'll return my thread back in front of the dumbbells, trim out the excess. And 
and then we're ready to work on the fibers that will, will be the top side of the minnow. Okay. The middle layer, I'm going to use this uh, chartreuse hair, and this will create the color in the fly. The pearl and the silver don't do much for the color. They're kind of a neutral bait fish color, a very, you know, I like those two colors the best. So I'll cut out some of the uh, chartreuse hair to the length that I want, lay that down over top of the dumbbells on top of the hook and kind of let the fibers part on your, your hook point and I'll secure that group of fibers to the top, kind of pull those and keep them layered there. Just put down a single layer of monofilament. Bring my thread back, trim out the excess. Try to keep that nice and clean. We are going to epoxy over this. And then my last group of fibers that I'm going to put on top will be the silver crinkle zone. It has some UV in it as well. And I'm going to use a clump of fibers that's pretty similar to the amount of pearl that I used. So I'll put that on as the top layer. Secure those once again in front of the dumbbells. Cut out the loose fibers. If you want to, you can pull all those fibers back, you can come back behind the dumbbell, I'll do maybe one, one or two wraps there, bring my thread back forward, and we'll do a whip finish. The monofilament does act just like thread, it actually whip finishes very well and ties flies with ease. Okay. If you want to, you can take your fly out of the vise, pull all those fibers back, and we have the basic shape of our bug. What I'm gonna do before I epoxy, is swap sides with the hook here. And we'll actually put in a couple gill plates using this red acrylic paint. And I just use a toothpick. To apply underneath the dumbbells here. Just adds a little bit of flavor to the bug. And as you're mixing the epoxy, that'll give that, that paint their time to dry. And then I'm going to go ahead and mix up my five minute epoxy and I'll be right back. All right, so I've got, I've got my epoxy mixed up here, just a small amount. This is a Z epoxy, five minute Z epoxy. And I just use a toothpick to kind of get it mixed. And I'll grab a little shard of it off the paper and start applying it. And I want to fill in around those dumbbells. Anybody buy, anybody buy fresh tamales? Uh, not today for me, buddy. Yeah, Thank I think we're buy. good. Thank you. And then I'm just going to keep applying. I usually spend about two minutes mixing the epoxy, a minute applying it, and then I'll rotate it for another minute or two, and then it sets up and it's done. Just keep your fibers kind of cleaned up.
push back. I don't I don't put the epoxy on the outer part of the eye. I just want to make sure that they're secured on the back side and creates a quite a bit more durable fly, especially for the, the saltwater guys. Catching big stripers and things like that. Smallmouth bass are what I target in Idaho for them in the Snake River. And once again, if you epoxy over that monofilament, you will see a lot of that silver come through on the top side, the green in the middle, and then your pearl on the belly. It creates an awesome looking head. Because of its transparency, I find that the Z epoxy dries clear and it is zero tack once it's fully dried. A little bit different than the UV quick cures that are out there and it doesn't really take much longer to mix up a small amount and apply it. And I'm just going to rotate it for a minute or so until it sets up. Uh, the crinkles on fiber you can find on Snake River Fly website. It's available there. This video will be available on Snake River Fly's website as well as YouTube. And that's it. The crinkles on clouser. Thanks for watching.